So, welcome everyone to the last talk of this paper session. Um, uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Bud Brown, who's retired from Virginia Tech, where he taught for 48 uh, years. Um, we got to meet each other over the internet, did not meet face to face till today, uh, as we worked on both the paper session and hosting the jam session, which will be more of a sing along. Hope everyone will stay around for that. That starts at 5.30. Uh, but nevertheless, I'd like to introduce Bud Brown with the last talk, and he'll be talking about music is mathematical, mathematics is musical. Take it away, Bud. Jason. Oh, okay, good, yeah. I want to thank Jason for organizing this, uh, this lovely session that we've had. And uh, uh, long time ago, I saw numbers on a page instead of the titles of what the text was. This was a collection of uh, waltzes uh, by Johannes Brahms. The collection was uh, on the... Uh, on the music on the stand for uh, uh, at a piano, which was in uh, my, uh, our house, I was about three maybe. This is this is, uh, and though there were eighteen numbers, one through eighteen, they didn't have titles, and so I always associated those numbers with music. So. You know, I knew the I, I I knew the song I knew the melodies and so when I think of eleven I think of dum 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 and when I think of of five is very sad and when I think of seven I just I, it's just so depressing I don't even want to think about it but so I got into music real early. And uh, I got into mathematics real early because those were, you know, numbers. I loved numbers always. I was a number theorist, and I like to think I still am. So let's, let's see. Music is math. What, what are we going to expect here? Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, what's the story on this? All right, so, okay. All right. Music has scales, intervals, chords, inversions, melodies, harmonies, and rhythms. That's all of mathematical origin. Math has patterns, themes, variations, converses, all of musical origin. And uh, here are some topics we're going to look at. Okay. This is what to expect. The Pythagorean scale, uh, good and bad vibrations, whatever that means. The piano theorem and variations. The tritone, which is a vexing integral, uh, interval. What do you do with the tritone? We'll talk about that. The harmonics from a certain, a particular tone, uh, the odd ones and the even ones, the, the fundamental tone and the higher uh, harmonics, the overtones, the odd and even harmonics behave very differently. And we'll see why. We'll also talk about the circle of fifths. This is in sort of a geom geometrical sense and the 12-tone scale on a donut. And uh, a musical Pythagorean theorem that Pythagoras may have missed. And finally, why are mathematicians also often musicians, but not vice versa? Okay, so this is my thoughts, right? Okay. The Pythagorean harmonious intervals. These are the, uh, 
uh, beginning with the fundamental and you have uh, the uh, frequency ratios. For instance, an octave uh, is double the frequency of, of the fundamental. The fifth is three halves and so forth. The tritone we're right, can, right now going to call T. Uh, it's, it's strange. And so all of these, all of these notes, all of these uh, can be played on a violin. Now, well, so what's wrong with this picture? We compose intervals by multiplying their pitch ratios. Now, uh, one of our speakers pretty much told all this whole story, but I didn't know that in advance. Uh, so, so now a standard piano has 88 keys. I'm not going to play all of them. The lowest note is an A, and seven octaves above that A is the highest A on the piano. So what do we got? Okay, I'll get this out of the way. So. Seven octaves. One fifth above a tone has frequency three halves A, and it turns out that 12 fifths above A has frequency three to the 12th A. Right? Okay. So, so. Oops, oops, sorry. I got that wrong, didn't I? Oh, well. I don't know how to work the equipment. Anyway, if you, you uh, the circle of fifths, uh, 12 fifths above the uh, A has frequency three halves to the 12th. Seven octaves has frequency two to the seventh A. Well, what's wrong with this picture is on the piano, these notes are the same. So we should have three halves of the twelfth is equal to two to the seventh. That is to say, three to the twelfth is two to the nineteenth. Bet you didn't know that, Art, did you? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and so we have the piano theorem. If pianos are tuned so that octaves and fifths are both perfect, then 3 to the 12th equals 2 to the 19th, which is contrary to unique factorization of integers into primes. So that's a, that's a theme. If 12 fifths is 7 octaves, and 3 to the 12th equals 2 to the 19th. Of course, the ifs, you know, are not correct. It's not quite that way. They're tempered. Uh, now, there are a few variations here. If you take 12 fourths, uh, 12 fourths consecutively will give you 5 octaves, and then you have 2 to the 19th equals 3 to the 12th. Major thirds, same thing. You got one octave, Three major thirds is one octave, so 125 is the same as 128. And the same thing with minor thirds. Uh, whole steps, you get the original one back. And uh, the tritone, there's some, there's some problems with this. Because if you have two tritones as an octave, then that says that uh, this this tritone, satis the, the, the frequency satisfies T squared equals two. 
So T is the square root of two. And people weren't real comfortable with those square roots back in the olden days. So let's take a closer look, all right? Now, a tritone is an interval consisting of six consecutive semitones. So start here and go up six. Also, you can go down. It's not a comfortable, it's not a comfortable interval. Well, what frequency ratio should we assign to this? I mean, gosh. Now, one, one approach to this would be, this is completely uh, my own uh, strange ideas. It lies between the fourth, which is four thirds ratio, and the fifth with ratio three halves. So, eh, what the heck, let's try an average of four, three, and three, two, three over two. Which average? We got all kinds of averages, well, let's look. We can try the arithmetic, the geometric, and the harmonic means in that order. Well, with arithmetic, you end up with uh, 17 twelfths. The geometric, again, you end up with the square root of two. And harmonic, you end up with 24 sevenths. And for a variety of reasons, these aren't really very satisfactory. The numbers are too, the numerators and denominators are too big. But there is one that works, and that's the mediant. The mediant uh, is what you do when you're calculating grade point averages and batting averages and how you update such things. So if we do that, the, the sum of the fractions is the sum of the numerators divided by some of the denominators, and we get seven-fifths. That's lovely. As a matter of fact, seven-fifths is one of the values for the tritone in a, system, a tuning system called mean tune temperate, tem temperament, temperament. And now from the math of the tritone to the music of the tritone. Tritones are mysterious. They're not easy to find out. They're kind of dark. A musical phrase that ends with a tritone is unresolved. It's a, it's, it's a note followed by the uh, six steps up above, and it just doesn't sound, you know, people didn't know what to do with it. Medieval composers were forbidden from using the tritone. Can you blame them? They were, you know, but there's no real record of severe punishment. You know, people say, oh, they were burned at the stake. Nah, they weren't burned at the stake. The historical record is silent. And by Bach's time, composers began using tritones. And by the early 20th century, tri tritones were commonplace, often appearing with pairs of eight adjacent half steps or two whole steps played simultaneously, uh, you'd hear things like this. Um, now, this was a bit of music composed by a, a man named Nino, Nino Rota for a, a movie back in 1960 called La Dolce Vita. Uh, he had some strange things like that. Anyway, what about other musical genres, such as popular music and the American musical theater? That's another story. Let's look at West Side Story, which is filled with these. Tritones run rampant through this musical. The musical is dark. I don't know, it's Romeo and Juliet. The score begins with a fourth followed by an unresolved tritone. Dun! Now, is also 
the uh, first call of the shofar uh, when they're uh, you know, at, at the uh, at uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah at the Jewish New Year when they blow the shofar. That, no, that, that call, the name of that call is tekiah. And the word, the Hebrew word uh, for that, that, that's a Hebrew word and it means an alarm. An alarm. Isn't that interesting? So the score begins with one of these unresolved. That is, you don't, you go from the fourth and then the, and then the uh, tritone and nothing after it. And ends with three pairs of uh, strings. High violins, low bass. And each of those is a tri, each pair is an unresolved tritone. Maria, 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 that's, that's resolved. A lot of them, but each one of them is resolved. Now, before the first act ending rumble, Riff is urging his fellow Jets to play it cool. The music is all, play, all full of rumbles. Boy, boy, crazy boy, a hey, cool boy. Is it a rocket got in pocket? It goes on like that. I always like that. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, enough of all this darkness. Let's look at some harmonics. Okay, uh, if we have a fundamental with and uh, this uh, this graphic was shamelessly stolen from a talk given by David Kung many years ago. Um, and uh, so we have the natural pitches of these various notes and we have the piano pitch in frequencies. Yeah. So interesting thing about this, you look at the even numbered harmonics, the even numbered overtones, and what we get is, uh, let's see, well, here's what we get. The even harmonics from bottom to top are the notes A and the next A up, then the E above that, the A above that, uh, the A ab E above that, and the G above that. Played together, they are the notes of a major triad. Wow. The opening chord of Star Wars, episode four, A New Hope, or also uh, the national anthem, bum, 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 bum. Yeah. The odd harmonics. Listen to the odd harmonics. What do you think, huh? Pretty scary, huh? Those are the harmonics. That, you know, they play. If you play them together, they, get, they form a chord called a 11th. Uh, that, uh, that one up there is 11 steps above the, the fundamental. Uh, the, the, the other, uh, the, the first four of those form a chord called a diminished seventh, or a seventh for short. So, so what? 
so plenty. Without the diminished seventh chord, which is an interesting chord, um, Now, that's composed of two interlaced fifths and this. A, a fifth and a tritone. Now, if you don't have that diminished seventh chord, you would have no blues, no rock, no jazz, no soul, no, no uh, rock and roll, no Louis Armstrong or Miles Davis, and so no So What, the composer of that. No Bessie Smith or Ray Charles or Wynton Marsalis or Tina Turner, Duke, Duke Ellington, no Beyonce, no Taylor Swift. Yes, that's right. No Elvis, no Beatles, no Prince, no Nina Simone or Charlie Parker or Dizzy Gillespie or... Paul Desmond, so no take five. I will survive. Well, you get the idea. Cherish the odd harmonics. The odd harmonics give us color and texture and into the, the blues, jazz. Gotta love those odd harmonics. Say yes. yes. Good. Just say yes, right, okay. Now, for something completely different. <sighs> this is a five by five grid with the, uh, uh, the notes, uh, the notes on the, uh, uh, on the horizontal lines are the, uh, the chromatic scale in order, A, B flat, B, C, D flat, then you get down to D and you go, and then you go. And uh, the vertical jumps are perfect fifths, A, D, G, C, F, and so forth like that. You say, so what? Okay, there's a point to this. This is kind of cute. Now, I'm going to place this orange uh, rectangle superimpose it. And inside that rectangle, if you look carefully, you will see every one of the uh, 12 tones of the octave exactly once. Now, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to identify the, uh, the blue dots together the red dots together, and the black dots together. We're going to do all of that now, and we're going to fold it up. Now, how do you fold a parallelogram into a donut? Well, not easy, but we're doing rubber sheet geometry, so we don't care about that. You identify the opposite sides. That gets C to A, and now you have a tube, and you identify the uh, uh, the, the circles, and you have a parallelogram folding into a donut. Yeah. So here it is, the chromatic scale in the fifths in the plane. They're still waiting to fold. And when we do that, we get this. Isn't that a lovely picture? Geometry, music, you gotta love them. Now, here's something I don't know if it's well known or whatever, but uh, about 30 years ago, one of, you know, I was teaching math as a liberal art, we got to talking about Pythagorean theorem and music, and somehow or other this thing emerged from that discussion. Well, to Pythagoras, three and four and five were three sides of a right triangle. So it's three squared plus four squared equals five squared. Geometry incarnate. Three plus four plus five equals 12. Very good, Jason. You've done your studying. The number of steps in the chromatic scale. So, 
There are three half steps to a minor third, four half steps to a major third, and five half steps to a fourth. The third, the fourth, you know. Played in the order three, four, three, four and five, they form a minor triad. Played in the order four, three, five, they form a major triad. The two beautiful triads, these two beautiful triads, are intimately related to Pythagoras' 3-4-5 triangle. I found that absolutely fascinating. And if that ain't music meets math, what is? Now, music plays to the senses. Everybody has access to it. It attracts everyone, including non-mathematicians. Mathematics is abstract, it's harder to reach, and so it doesn't attract musicians in general. Isn't that, and so that's why. Now, Archias of Tarentum finally gets to take stage with uh, the four ways, of th the four, four things you needed to know, the quadrivium. We have magnitudes and numbers at rest and in motion. At rest, magnitudes at rest, geometry. Numbers at rest, arithmetic. Uh, magnitudes in motion, astronomy. And numbers in motion, take a guess. You get a cigar. Thank you. They were all asleep, Jason. <laughs> They're all content. Ah. Okay, let's thank the speaker one more time.